Today we're going to create an effect using a scrolling background to simulate depth. This is sometimes known as a parallax background. I'm going to start with a create new HTML5 canvas. Then I'm going to create a rectangle. I'm going to use no outline and I'm going to use a blue water color for my paint bucket. Make sure object drawing mode is off and we'll draw a shape. Go to our selection tool, we can select our shape. I'm going to want this to be a very specific size, so I'm going to make this 100 width. And I could make the height 100 so that it's square, but I'm actually going to make it twice as tall so that I have plenty of height for this whenever we duplicate it. Move this down a little bit, and I'm going to go to the oval tool. And I'm going to pick a different color, it really doesn't matter what, as long as that it's not similar to this, and not similar to your background either. So I'm going to go with red draw shape and then since I made the width of my rectangle 100 I'm gonna make the width and the height of my oval 100 so that it is a circle that matches the width of my rectangle. I'm gonna take my circle and I'm going to drop it so that it lines up with the edge and the top of my shape. If you're not getting it the options for it to line up make sure that your magnet which is snap to objects is turned on then click the background so that those two shapes merge together, and then when you pull it out, you'll see that we've cut out that piece. We no longer need our circle, so I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to copy my shape, and then paste it. If I put it in place, it will be in the exact same spot, and then I'm going to drag that over until those line up. I want to make sure that it lines up vertically and horizontally. So I should have a cross, not just one of the two lines on my shape. Once they are together, click on the background so that they merge. Then you can select that one shape. And a shortcut for duplicating an object is holding the Alt key and dragging it, and you'll have a second copy. Click the background for them to merge. Copy it again. Merge. Get another copy. Once we have enough to fill up our stage, I want to make one more copy. So let's scroll over. And then set that up so that I have twice as much wave as I have background. Now if we have multiples of these, the blue is just going to blend together. So we need to put an outline on these so that we can see each layer individually. So I'm going to go to the ink bottle tool, which is the paint bucket with a little outline. And then this is going to put an outline on a shape. So I'm going to select a dark blue color for the outline of my object. Choose how thick of a border you want. I'm going to go with three. Click my shape and then it should fill in. Then I'm going to click on the keyframe for my layer to select everything and I'm going to convert this to a symbol and that's going to be called a wave. And this layer is going to be wave one. I'm going to give this a motion tween and to make it last 100 frames. Then I want to move this over until it's almost lining up with the next wave. So just move it in a straight line. And if we run it, we have our wave moving across the screen. I'm going to lock wave one. And I'm going to do the same thing for wave two. I'm going to drag a copy of my wave out of my library onto my screen, and we'll see that our wave now covers up wave one. So I'm going to take wave two and put it underneath wave one. Since this is farther back, I'm going to use the free transform tool to scale it down. I'm going to hold shift and drag the corner so that it's just a little bit smaller and make sure that I have the edge going across. I'm going to put a motion tween on that object. And I'll move that straight across as well to where they almost overlap again. If they seem to be synchronized, then we moved it too much, or we didn't move our first layer enough. So at the end, we'll just move that back a couple notches. I'll try it again, and now our front wave is moving faster than our back wave, and that looks pretty good. Create a third wave, this time on the bottom. Drag out my wave again. This time I need to make sure that it's smaller than my second wave. Create my motion tween on the first frame. 
at the end we're going to move that straight over. Make sure you do not go past where the end of your wave goes past the edge of the stage over here. In theory it should be slower than the second wave, which should be slower than the first wave. I'll change my stage to be a lighter color. Lock my other waves and then I'm going to create a fish layer in the middle. So now I need to draw a fish. So I'm going to go to my pencil and I want my smoothing as high as it can be to smooth out any rough edges. So down at the bottom where pencil mode is, make sure you change that to smooth. And let's make smoothing 100. And then I'm just going to draw a couple of stripes on there. It's okay if the lines overlap. You want to make sure that you pass the outer lines. And I'm going to use my paint bucket to fill in my stripes. And I'll fill in the rest of the shape with orange. Add a little side fin. Maybe a little eye. Possibly a mouth. And I'm going to go to my selection tool and I'm going to double click on the outline which should select all of the outlines that cover the outside edge of my shape and the lines that extend past the edge. And then I'm going to go to outline and select no color. And then I should have a nice clean image without a bunch of lines sticking out. And I'm going to create a motion tweener on my fish layer. Now that it's drawn, it doesn't need to be this large unless you want to have your fish look like a whale. So let's scale that down. I'm going to rotate it to what I want it to start like, just behind the wave. Then at the end, I'm going to have my fish move over to also beneath the wave. Go to the selection tool, and I'm going to take the line that was created, bend it so that it goes up in the air. We'll see that the fish never does rotate. There are two ways that we can do this. We can either select our motion tween and do orient to path which will make the fish follow the arc of the path or if we don't want to do that we can go to the end we'll put wave one in outline so we can see the fish change the orientation so that it matches the line then it should just rotate through either way is fine depends on what look you're going for turn my layer back on I'm going to shrink that down a little bit so that after it finishes jumping, there'll be a little bit more time before we go to the next part. And then we'll run it and see what that looks like. Feel free to modify things to match the way you would want it to work out a little better. I shortened my timeline to make it run a little bit faster. Once you're finished, go ahead and save it. I'm naming my assignment Scrolling Background. Then I'm going to go publish my project, my website animate folder, publish creates the files, refresh my file list, go to my scrolling background HTML, add that to the bottom of my animate index, and we'll save our index and upload our animate folder, and then check our site to make sure that it works.